Hey guys, welcome back. It's Miles Kinney from Maritime Sword School Moncton, MSS Moncton, and I want to welcome you to the third part of our full Roworth curriculum. Today we are going to be covering part two, sections two, three, four, and five from Roworth's manual. Of course, as always, that manual is available in the description along with all the documents you're going to need to get your study group off of the ground, because that's the whole point of what we're doing here. Today, we're talking about measure and footwork. Measure is distance from the target. We're going to give you some really cool tools for how to find it and how to maintain it. We're going to pair it with footwork drills that are going to teach you how to move inside a rower system. Beyond that, I want to announce our new .com, www.maritimeswordschool.com. I hope you check it out, and I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on with us. So. Moncton is the third MSS school, okay? The third MSS club. Now, we're pretty small potatoes, all right, guys? Just because there's three of us doesn't mean we're all high and mighty, okay? Um, and we're going to be starting a t-shirt fundraiser here, okay? Because we are in our soft launch in Moncton, and frankly, we have a wait list, and we need more equipment to expand our classes here. So if you like what we're doing here and decide you want to support us, I hope you get a t-shirt. Check it out on the dot com or send me an email and I'll get you I'll get you headed down the right path, okay? Beyond that, as always, slice like, slash subscribe, and hey, let's get going. Alrighty folks, let's get started. First off, we're going to be talking about measure. Measure is your distance to your hated adversary or your friend who is your sparring partner, as is, you know, I think the case for 99.999% of us, I hope. <laughs> Regardless, we're going to get started with this. And over the course of this video, we're going to be thinking about measure as we go through it, and we're going to be incorporating it into our footwork drills as well. Let's go. Roworth gives us two methods to find measure, but he does caution us that it's always going to be context sensitive. Some people are just longer. Some people have better lunges. Some people are faster. And he tells us that one of the methods isn't very effective, so we're going to focus on the more effective one. Really straightforward. Straight back in your stance, raise the point of your weapon. If your the point of your weapon is touching the shell of your adversary's weapon, you are in measure. Great job. Well, let's start turning that into a drill and see what we can do with it, okay? One of you will be out of, will be advancing, one of you won't be. You'll both have your weapon lowered. Here I am, moving in on Brennan. When I feel I'm in measure, I raise my weapon, he raises his, and we test it. I was about two inches short there. Try again. Hmm, still about two inches short. I think I'm going to dial it in this time. Here we go. Oh, it's bueno. Perfecto. I love it. All right, so you see it's pretty straightforward, right? But I want you rotating this through all of the people in your class. Beyond that, don't always use the same starting point, right? Because then you're just going to be training a particular distance and closing a particular distance. Beyond that, you can mix up your, um, you can mix up your footwork a little bit. You can have a little bit of fun with it. So use this kind of as an idea for how you're going to be training it. See, Brennan's going way out of distance now, and he's starting to move in. Let's see how he does. He got it. All right, folks, you know a little bit about measure. Let's start plugging some footwork into it, all right? First off, we're going to be covering advancing. Then we'll be looking at retreating. We'll start using those together with paired drills. We'll start using those together while maintaining measure. And after that, we'll be starting to look at traversing. Advancing and retreating. Okay, so your solo advancing and retreating drills are really straightforward. 
Brennan, one of our students, one of our members at MSS Moncton. He's doing his thing, right? Uh, he has boxing and taekwondo experience. And, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You're extending your lead foot one-third of your lunge, shifting your weight to it, and then dragging your rear foot along, okay? But here's where things are just a little bit different with row earth when you're doing the retreating step row earth specifically tells you when you're doing your retreat to lift your foot off of the ground um, in case there is any kind of impediment behind you okay um, this is really really interesting and again and i think it shows you again that contact that row earth is always trying to give the context between the real world and the training world, the sport fencing world. And that's that's just another little touch that he throws in. He doesn't want you tripping over anything in the middle of the night. Let's take a look at our chasing drill. Now, in this version of the tra chasing drill, the person advancing is the one taking the initiative. You can, mess, you can, you know, mix up these drills a little bit, okay? The person retreating can take the initiative. The other person can be pressing them. Have some fun with it. But in this version that we're doing right here, the person advancing is the one taking the initiative. The person retreating is the one responding. And I actually love these drills. I, I think they're fantastic. You know what I mean? It's It teaches you so much. Now... Let's take it to the next level and start to incorporate measure. Let's find measure. Hey, there it is. Perfection. Well, oh, wait. Now there it is. <laughs> but what we're going to do here is we're going to do a chasing drill again, back and forth, again with the person advancing being the one taking the initiative. But this time, we're going to be trying to maintain our measure while we do it, okay? Now, you'll just want to raise the point a hair above the shell so that you're not relying on that push response of somebody touching your shell as your as your um, stimulus to um, to move backwards okay you want it just floating a little bit above so that your adversary is using their visuals to um, Oh, and he has to come back a little bit to maintain measure to as their cue to move backwards, okay? Hey, that was pretty good. Now, Rower talks about this in the measure section, but we're going to put it in this section, okay? Rower tells us that when you are encountering somebody who is impetuous and aggressive, all right, as they advance to drop the point into their face, hey, that should make anyone think twice. Now, in his text, he tells you to do it as you retreat, all right? So I want you to train this multiple ways. I want you to train it as just a stop thrust right there, jam it in his face, make him think twice, and retreating as you drop it into the face, okay? Again, we're not thrusting with sticks because they don't compress in the thrust, but once you start to move into synthetics and steels in your club, you're going to be able to start using that, and I actually think this is a pretty effective tactic to, um, to, to slow down somebody who's maybe a little bit too aggressive. And I'm definitely not on my back foot enough throughout all of these. Excellent, folks. You can advance, you can retreat, you can maintain measure while doing so beautifully. I'm very impressed. But the real question is, can you traverse? Rowworth likes the traverse mainly as a method of saving face so that you don't look like a coward while you're trying to get out of the other fellow's way. <laughs> All right? He actually has a really cool diagram. When I first saw it, I had no clue how to read it. We're going to tell you how to read it, and we're going to give you some drills so that you can understand how to use it and maintain measure while you're doing so. Let's go. Okie dokie, folks. Let's take a look at this graphic. The first time I saw it, I was so confused. I had to read the text about four or five times to understand what was happening, but that's like most things in this manual. Let's take a look and see what we can do with it, okay? There's eight lines. 
There's a whole bunch of letters. Let's dissect it. So right in the center, there's a C. The C is the center point between you and your opponent, and each of the eight lines represents a line of defense between yourself and your opponent. In order to move around this circle, you're going to be using the four and the back traverse, okay? For the four traverse, your right foot will be moving first to the letter on the inner circle, and then then your left foot will be following to the letter on the outer circle. To do a back traverse, your right foot will be, or rather, <laughs> to do a back traverse, your left foot is moving first to the letter on the outer circle, and your right foot is following to the letter on the inner circle. It's pretty straightforward, but, you know, this thing was a little bit confusing when I first looked at it, so I wanted to make sure I explained it to you guys, okay? So let's try to visualize this. Your right foot will go on Q, your left foot will go on P. To do a four traverse, your right foot will be moving to O, and your left foot will go to N, then your right foot to M, then your left foot to L. Pretty straightforward. To do a back traverse, your left foot will go to A, then your right foot will go to B, then your left foot will go to C, then your right foot goes to D. So there are five movements in our drill for this, but I didn't film the solo ones, okay? The solo ones, you're just moving around the center point. We're just going to skip right ahead to us doing the pair drills, okay? And beyond that, we're checking measure periodically, okay? You can also do this while keeping the stick extended the entire time so that you're trying to stay in measure the whole time. I know that for me, this shows a lot of what I have to work on with my traverses. They're a little bit messy. I don't feel super solid with them, and that's something that Rower specifically cautions against, okay? But he also gives us some really cool context for this, all right? So he wants you to traverse as a way of saving face instead of retreating if somebody is beating you back. Beyond that, he says that you're going to need to use this to achieve advantage, whether there's a ditch, whether the sun is in someone's eyes. There can be a million different reasons. So we really want you practicing this and practicing doing it while staying in the correct measure. Of course, take turns with who's leading, who's responding. Be a great training partner, okay, guys? And um, this is pretty straightforward, but I think that there's some value in really breaking this apart and drilling it. And hey, that's our last one for the day. Of course, make sure to check out the documents for, um, for the detailed instructions on how to do all these drills. There's a little bit more this week. Actually, there's quite a bit more this week than, than what we showed in just the filming, all right? So I want you to make sure that you're reading um, those drill lists um, for when you're designing things. And you can see with this, you can kind of fake people out. And I know that it shows me that I'm just a little bit too twitchy, okay? Just a little bit too twitchy. And I get a little bit messed up um, on my lines there, okay? Beyond that, some of my steps are a little bit too big. And as a result, they don't feel super steady. And with all of my footwork, I'm seeing that I'm kind of drifting off of that rear foot more than I should, and I'm ending up center-weighted. But hey, that's it for today, folks. Folks, excellent job. You learned measure, you learned advancing, you learned retreating, you learned traversing. I am very, very pleased with your progress. Excellent work. Of course, I hope that you check out MaritimeSwordSchool.com. Give us a little bit of feedback. I really hope that maybe you consider buying a t-shirt so that we can get more loner gear. Please and thank you. And of course, slice like slash subscribe. And hey, we'll see you next time, gang. Peace.